A great good morning to all of those who tuned into the realest thing coming out of Ghana, indisputably so. So this morning we're going to talk about some of the fundamental principles that make us who we are and that um, keep societies or sections of societies unchecked. But what I could tell you, the real story today is not the Ghana Press Association, the business of Ghana Press Association. It's Sir Mars, um, you know, I was on the ground when Sir Mars was murdered. And the story that the police is putting out there, the statements that the police have put out, and what we're seeing with our eyes is far different from the facts on the ground. And family, the family members of the suspect are claiming, um, you know, foul play. They ain't satisfied with how things are going. So we got to look at it. Um, and we're going to, I'm, I'm going to detail that. Picture sharing as to who saw Mars with rent in relationship. One, the guy who's charged, people post the pictures of his wife and the three children. Not the children face, they cover the children face, the one picture that I saw. But it was not nice. It's not nice. Right? Very distasteful. And now what happens in broadcasting news like this, that is where the Ghana Press Association comes in. They come in because they guide you and they train media workers, journalists, and professionals in the field how to do and how to better serve the public. But what makes a journalist? Who decides in Guyana and who handed down the authority to a business named the Guyana Press Association. By the way, Sashin, um, let me see. I got a front page. Do I have the photo? I'm going to transfer this to WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Let me transfer it to WhatsApp. D I G I. Right? So, who made the Guyana Press Association or what makes the business, and I say the business name the Guyana Press Association, what makes that business the authority? Well, what makes that business the authority or what should have made that business the authority on who and who can and can't be a journalist in Ghana, is how that authority or how that business holds itself accountable. That business standing. Like who makes the preacher? Who makes the pastor the pastor the head? He goes through a process, he's recognized and respected. But the pastor can't be chaffing the members if he found out to be a pervert and not a pastor. He falls from grace. So the business of association called press association, the business, that's all that it is. Because TBN, they break news, has a board of directors. They break news. One of the leading news entities in this country has a board of directors. How, who decides? If we're leading. Well, we got the most watched programs. We are reached across the world. Hence, I say one of the leading. Are there people watching? Where are you watching from today? Where are you watching from today? If you're on our live program, where are you watching from today? Please put in the comments. 
Which part of the world are you watching from today? Can the viewers say, so Imran Ali says he's looking from the USA. DC Mo is looking from Toronto. Melvin Singh is looking from Barbados, Joan, USA. Ram Saroop is looking from the UK. Jones is looking from New Jersey. Lal looking from Florida. TBN is one of the leading news entities in Guyana. Our platform reaches the world, USA, New Jersey, Essequibo Coast, Canada, Sarnam, Westchester. Now, TBN, if you did not know, you will be now informed is an incorporated company in Guyana. Look at that. They Break News is an incorporation. T-H-E-Y-B-R-E-A-K News. Right? This costs, a, to incorporate a company in Guyana, costs anywhere from 100000 to 500000 I will not say how much I paid. Because I wanted it done the right way. So TBN has a board of directors. And it is incorporated in Guyana. Because when I look. I calculate you could pay. $500,000 and get something done properly that would be recognized or respected or you could go wanting to have a news entity imagine going and spending $5,000 now TBN has a board of directors you could go and register a business of $5,000 under your own name, Nazima Ragobir. I have the document here. It's a legit document from the deeds registrar. So who you believe own the Guyana Press Association? Nazima Ragobir. The Guyana Press Association is the business of Nazima Ragobir. One individual. <laughs> I can't make up these things. Look at the document there. I got it there for you. You seen it? Look at it. Business name. It's not an incorporation like TBN. Yet this business, this hustle, Owned by Nazima Ragobir. Yeah? Decides. She has the authority. And the four of them got the authority. For decide who and who. And in cooperation. I must spend $500,000. And you spend your $5,000. The Guyana Press Association could be a vending organization for all I care. You understand? It could be a group of vendors. Now, me and make up these things. This is a matter of fact. This is a document out of the deeds registrar. If Nazima Ragobir and Gordon Mosley. Could come and explain this because Garden Mosley is a clap back king. Clap this. How can you. So wait. 
When you use that president, somebody else is registered in a name. So who next register in this company in a name? And why did Nazima Ragobear only register back this company this year in January? Well, let me tell you why it's registered company. Money, 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 money. Money. Nazima Ragobear has to tell the public how much money they get from foreign organizations and how was it spent? That's what I gotta do. The Guyana Press Association, the business called the Guyana Press Association, has a model similar to like the business that Vincent Alexander registered in him. He any friends? A party. Similar model. TBN is a company that has directors. How does a business name Guyana Press Association? Owned by Nizima Ragobir, decide who is and who is not a journalist and which organization can or can't subscribe to the business. Well, I have filed an action. That will see Sunday's election coming to a halt until some issues with the business called the Guyana Press Association owned by Nazima Ragabir. And again, this is a document that I have here. It's on the way. You could go and see it. The Guyana Press Association is a business registered in Nazima Ragabir's name. That's now going to hold an election to see if it's going to get the next president. And everybody wants to know why they're holding up on this thing. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what's the big problem. This thing has enough problem inside there. This thing has enough problem inside there. When people ask, With the money that they already confusion there, Alex. Um, you're getting to me now, brother. But there's there's no likelihood that me you gonna meet her, brother. No use a fool, you. No use a fool, you. Your body don't depend on certain things. Meeting is mostly business and and movements. Your body don't line. Yes, and even when I line in the people I associating with, it's all about money. No use I I lie to you. If you want to pass through the studio, take out a picture and all them things quickly. That's about it. I got all about five minutes for them thing now. You body don't gaff and laugh and yes, and it look like I funny, but you know, they ain't got nothing funny about me. So you have it, the business of the Ghana Press Association. It's clear there. Business and it has the number, um, business name at the top. And you see what this mark? Biz business name registration. It's not an incorporation like I have, like TBN has. TBN has an incorporation. TBN has been incorporated You see here TBN has been incorporated in Guyana TBN is a registered company You understand Like Kaicho News Like Starbrook News yes So the person the body the so so called association The so-called association is a $5,000 business namely that of Nazima Ragobir 
and they decide who is journalist and who could be permitted to join the Guyana Press Association, which sole purpose should be taking in the weak, strengthening them, and allowing them to go out there and ensure accountability, ensure transparency, skin up, turn up, clear up. But the Guyana Press Association itself has secretive members, people that want to remain secret, an organization that want to uncover secrets, have people within it that want their identity to be remain secret. Is the Guyana Press Association a CIA front? What's secret? Well, the secret is that it's a PNC front. And the secret is now out. Right? So look at it. Business name, Guyana Press Association. Business number 216005. Status new. While, while Nazimo Ragobir was the president for five years he didn't have a registration why she was dispensing who to do what and when and where and critic you can't come in here they didn't even have a five thousand dollar registration do they pay nis i pay nis do they pay any taxes i pay taxes But they want to be a body or seen as that body. Name Nazimo Ragobir. Address La 263 Thomas Street, North Cummingsburg, Georgetown. Date of commencement 2023, the 1st, January the 11th. Right? They could be vendors for all I key. I am saying they're no authority on the Guyanese critic Mikhail Rodriguez or any company that I'm associated with. We gotta be fair. We all have to be treated fairly. There are many media workers that they decide they're gonna give the people their press pass or they're not give them the press pass. This morning, to bring clarity, no. Let's go to something This here is a program Last night By Freddie Kisun It is undisputed As to the level That Freddie Kisun is at in this country. It is undisputed. There's no discussion. Believes that the oil deal is wrong. Should I jump on the bandwagon with no. her? Look, there are some loopholes in this contract. There are some loopholes in the way. So you could call us uh, if you want to watch some callers and you in. To tell me why he finds Starbuck News independent. So last night, this is Freddie Kassoon. I have respect for him, but I will hope that the man Freddy is reading the Starbuck News editorials and he's reading the newspapers. Freddie Kassoon has a program on TBN. Freddie Kassoon should have accolades for being a journalist. And Freddie Kassoon is on TBN. Who is Nazima Ragobir to Freddie Kisun? How many people could say they are in Freddie Kisun's category as a journalist? 
This is Freddy Kisun on TBN. The independent journalist is gone. I am now going to make a revelation on this station. And I'm asking all journalists and all editors to do the decent thing and do the research. Do the people of this country know who funds the Marava Waves? Who has the fi majority financial share in the Marava Waves? I am not going to call the man name now. But he is a fanatic, insane hater of the government. And that man is the majority shareholder of the Marawa Waves. Now, tell me what is independent about that. No. Let's rotate uh, uh, the, the, the I hope executive. the rest, I hope this, you can I, do I hope the Canadian, UK, British, and American embassies when it was, um, um, Press Freedom Day. I hope they're listening. Do you know, do, uh, listeners, if you're listening, if you're looking, I will repeat this later in the program. Do you know last week what happened in the U.S.? Three prestigious, three prestigious bodies released a poll they did on the role of the media in the United States. And a majority of those polls say, said the media is jeopardizing democracy in the United States. I hope the Western ambassadors would come here and we can debate. Not in the that United could, States could alone. You, uh, in Guyana also. The same question. Is the, the media is jeopardizing democracy. Because they have taken on an authority to their own. If the Business of the Press Association, the business name, the Press Association, could be owned single-handedly by Nazima Ragubir. You imagine for $5,000, I could go and say Guyana, Guyanese Critic Media Association, $5,000, own it. Ain't got conform to nothing. And they start Telling people who is who and what they could do. When I can't even get it right. It's no association. It's not an NGO. It's Nazima Ragubir business. Guyana Press Association. She make it your business. Then come together and say the executives. Now, all right. So what? Does the Guyana Press Association, the business name the Guyana Press Association do next year when Nazima Ragabir comes out? Register it in the other person's name? How is that accountable? How is that accountability? The Guyana Press Association needs to answer those questions. It would be beautiful if Shabral, the executives of the Guyana Press Association, Royal Tony, Dennis Chabral, and Nazimo Ragobir could explain. And there's some other girl there. Can they explain how they expect? Where's the business? Class is the business. How does it make money? What's your purpose? Who are your customers? And who you're refusing? That would be nice. So the Guyana Press Association, it has been exposed here, is the sole property of Nazimo Ragubir. It's a business. Right? I have the document here. It's a document certified to be a true copy that came out of the deeds registry. Right? I'm done with that. Hi, 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 hi. I have since brought court proceedings. Um, which has been served in every way publicly possible. You see it on Garden Mosley page? This is a matter of fact. An association that he's a part of, he ain't got the news. He ain't got the news. 
You see it from Prime News, the news ain't prime no more. The news get prime up. This morning, we're gonna call one of the only people Now, one of the other things Nazima Ragobir has to tell us, which media house she works for. Prime News has been defunct years now, gone out of style. So can Nazima Ragobir show which media house she works for? Where she earns her money from? <laughs> well, she earns her money from her business, the Ghana Press Association. That the international community and the world did not know was hers. Because when they're reaching out and they're sending letters and they're sending email, the other bodies across the world, reporters without borders and everybody else, is thinking that they're dealing with an association. But they're dealing with a business that name association. I'm hoping bodies across the world reach out to the business called the Ghana Press Association. Because fraud is fraud. When you hear the Ghana Press Association, you assume... That is some form of an incorporation that is recognized by the multitudes. But no, I am sure the international community did not know that the Ghana Press Association is the name of Nazimo Ragubir's business. You want investigative journalism? Welcome to TBN with the Guyanese critic who uncover the uncoverers. <laughs> Await the garden mostly clap back. Is there any explanation? Or will there be a public statement by the Ghana Press Association as to how it became... Or how it is a one-person business is an explanation. Has that been going on all the time? I will now call someone that I've come to learn of and ask for her honest opinion. Since she's one of the only people qualified in the journalistic field in this country. One of the only people. I don't know if there are others. I'm talking about qualified or having the right qualifications. Because if we were to go to a court of law, it's highly unlikely that a judge would be able to explain. You have to get the explanation from somebody in the field. So I'm going to be calling on Miss Martina Johnson. Let me call direct on the phone. Good morning, Miss Johnson. Mikhail Rodriguez here, better known as the Guyanese Critic. Hi, morning. I know. Um, I called this morning briefly and I asked you if I could call for some input. And I, it should just be short and quick because I know you're doing a little babysitting. Um, just for, I, I'm on my morning program and I'm discussing journalism. I'm discussing the issues that I um, have had with the Guyana Press Association and how I've been treated um, 
as a journalist in Guyana, as I see myself. Um, you know, when we met a, a few months ago, I found your your understanding of journalism and everything else very in-depth. And I, I wondered why so? And you explained that is as a result of specific qualifications. Can you just give us a little bit of your background, a little bit of yourself, and then I'll just ask one question. Okay, um, and we're live, you said, right? Yes, Ms. Johnson, live. My name. Okay. Good, good morning to you and your listeners again. Uh, my background in journalism started 23 years ago at the Ghana Chronicle, and it was very brief. I then started teaching English language and literature at Queen's College, and subsequent to that, I migrated to Antigua and Barbuda, where I started uh, print and broadcast journalism and as well online journalism up until 2019 for Antigua. And I was also an editor, proofreader, etc. Um, I have studied uh, specifically at London School of Journalism, journalism as well as sub-editing and design. So um, my experience and my paper qualifications uh, speak for themselves. Okay, nice. And what are you, President, doing in, in, in the aspect of journalism in Guyana? Uh, multiple things. Um, Tell I us a little bit about that. Because I don't think, you know, you know when I see the day, Ms. Johnson, at the, the, the press, the, the thing we had, World Press Freedom Day, um, your, your demeanor is one very unassuming one. And a lot of people don't get credit for what they do. I know you're doing programs with um, the Ministry of Education and uh, highlighting issues and, and, and bringing things to the forefront for women. So give us a little bit about that. So I focus a lot uh, heavily on training, media training, writing, broadcast, print, um, whether it's broadcast as in radio or television, writing for newspaper, online journalism, social media management, etc. And I have a women's empowerment program on EduFM with my co-host Ramona Lupi. And we focus, although the name is Women Empowerment, we focus on issues in all genders and ages, etc. and educational background. Because we look at this and what we understand is that you can't empower women without um, empowering the rest of society. We all work together to empower each other. So that's what I've been doing. I also run uh, two companies, one in aviation and another in media, integrated marketing communication, editing, proofreading, uh, content management, publication management, social media, corporate communications, public you name it. Anything if people need assistance for these that. services, how can they get to you? So you can find our company information on Facebook. Integrated Marketing Communications, IMC. You can also, our website is under construction, but it's imcguyana.com. And they can also contact me on 640-9040. Thanks. Ms. Johnson, um, are you a member of the Guyana Press Association? You said you had one question. We were on four. <laughs> no, I'm not a member of okay. the Guyana. All right. Well, let me let me get to my question. I just <laughs> had it just set in a precedence. Um, do you think that Mikhail Rodriguez, the Guyanese critic, um, I know you follow a lot of different things. I don't know how much you follow me and what I do, but do you think um, I am um, qualified or a fall in the category of a journalist, given your background and your understanding in journalism. All right, let me go quick, touch something quickly on what you said. You know, I follow a lot of things. So professionally, I did media monitoring for some time. And it required me to read the daily newspapers, uh, follow online post things during the day, whether it is typed or audio, live, etc. So I, I did that for from 2018 up until last year. Um, our society right now, and particularly people like myself who work mostly in traditional media, um, we face this dilemma of describing people like yourself. Because, of course, um, 
In this day of the digital multimedia world, many, many online creators claim to be experts in various fields, but they don't have the experience to back up their claim. But people don't care. As long as they're bringing the information and they're successful in bringing the information, society considers them as journalists. In our traditional media background, oftentimes we say, well, you need to be qualified as a journalist. But the reality is 90% of the individuals who practice journalism are not qualified or not expert. You know, to become a medical doctor, you go to medical school. To be a lawyer, you go to law school. And likewise for journalism, you would have expected or you'd hope or you'd wish for that to be the case. But that is not the case. Journalism, mostly in, in most territories, it's baptism by fire. And when you look at the qualifications, the entry qualifications, I'll speak about Guyana in particular, it's a 5 CXT subject inclusive of math and English. That's basically the same requirements for someone doing a security job. So we put the, the qualifications at the bare minimum for entry level. That's one. And then secondly, looking specifically at what you do, I would, in some countries, let me um, explain, like in the U.S., for example, the journalists, bloggers, not all bloggers, but depending on their level of expertise in the area that they pronounce on, some of them are actually covered by the reporter's shield law. So they have the same constitutional protections and were recognized by the court as journalists. With respect to Guyana, I don't know if we have reached that stage of, of um, progression. I don't think we've progressed to that as yet. But with respect to what you do, everybody knows you as a critic, so I call you by name, critic. Um, personally, you do what every journalist in Guyana does. You bring the news. Very often when journalists go live in Ghana, it's um, not all verified as yet. Like I said, I did media monitoring, and we would track and put updates and develop um, feedback for the organizations that we are working for or with. And I've seen that with many, many journalists. I've seen it, I'm not going to call names, but I've seen it primarily with those who do digital content. And if it is that you're going to um, accept individuals, some individuals doing digital digital content and don't accept others, then you'd have to ask yourself the question, why? I'm not going to comment on the GTA situation. I think that that matter is before the court. The last update I saw on social media that it is before the court. And therefore, I consider it to be a matter for the court to pronounce on. But if you're going to accept one, then you should accept all if they are doing the same thing. And you know that I sometimes call you and I say, listen, this profession of journal profession that I enjoy, journalism, these things that I heard you say, I prefer you not to say that. Yes. Take another way. Keep your emotion out of it. Keep your opinions out of it. Um, but traditional media, that's what we do. But how far or how close are we to embracing new media? How far or how close are we to embracing what society um is now accepting as journalism. So we're in a different world. Many, many countries are now including citizen journalists and quote, um, unquote, knowledge journalists in their list of who can be a journalist. So the question can be answered from a professional standpoint and a legal standpoint. From a professional standpoint in Ghana, I think you, you have a news organization. It is duly registered. Um, if the, the registration renewal occurs, there's a tax filing annually and you're producing news content daily, then therefore you qualify as a media worker or I wouldn't say journalist because do you write news stories and do you have a byline? Do you, I know you go live. Well, I, 
Yes, I have worked at Kaicho News for some two years and yes, wrote stories and have bylines. I was the lead um, investigative journalist there. So when you look in totality at what you do and what you've done, I would consider you a legitimate media worker. But I'll say this, hmm. um, and I've said it to you before, if you're in the profession and you see someone falling or failing or, you know, with a particular weakness, I always reach out. Like, I didn't know you. I, I heard of you. I got your number from Facebook or somebody. I hmm. said, who's this guy? This, his work. I got a couple of suggestions to him and I called you up. I said who I was. I found you to be very approachable. And that's what I do with everybody because knowledge is power. If we don't help empower each other in this profession, then we cannot serve the people of our society um, as best as possible. So if we lift each other up, that's how I look at it. In the profession, then we will all be better. But don't, don't, I don't see it as um, the need to bracket any particular person or group we embrace we teach and we counsel and we support so that we can all work together as one media for the betterment of society miss johnson i want to thank you for your input and as you said you don't know how far we are away from um accepting other persons who are not normally considered to be journalists as journalists, well, I can tell you, maybe just a few days away, because this court matter will be followed by others which are going to set the precedence for how individuals are seen, how individuals are respected, and where media takes um, shape and form in Guyana in the future, and I will be playing a direct role in that. So I can assure you that is happening very soon. And I want to thank you for your input and all the work that you go, have done. Before I go, um, I know you asked me my qualifications, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't even remember all of it. I've also have I have also have a postgraduate diploma in mass communications and journalism. I also have a master's in business administration with a major in human resource management. Okay. So, yes. Yeah. They're Very going. interesting. That is why I chose to call you because I was looking at who to call. You know, Freddie called me this morning and Freddie said, you know, Mikhail, he doesn't call me critic. He said, Mikhail, I have looked at you and I've, 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 I know you and I am 100% behind you. And you know, Freddie stands, right? Yeah. Freddie has always been um, outspoken. And he takes on things and it takes on Freddie's farm. Not a no normal journalist, because that's why Freddie stands out, because he's unique, but the utmost professional. And when he called me this morning, I said, right here, let me call somebody who, not even Freddie, sum up um, the qualifications you would have had. And Freddie was been, has been down on the ground here for in Guyana for Kaicho News alone for 20 something years so he has moved about you have you, you know you've gone to the UK you've gone to the islands you've done different things in different fields and starting as you say a stint um, at Chronicle so um, thanks for your input very much respected you're welcome have a great day yes yeah, same to you Miss Johnson so now who to decide who to decide that is the question I'm asking here and it bothers me. Don't feel I'm not bothered. Yes, it bothers me. It upsets me. Because who? I have made every effort. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially to uplift myself. I've registered a company. I pay taxes. I hire people. Who is Nazima Ragubir? To choose how am I to be seen? Yes, I'm very much bothered. Who is Nazima Ragubir with a five thousand dollar business? We have people that work. At TBN, 
Let me go there. Let me say. TBN pays well. <laughs> you understand? Which media organization is Nazimo Ragubi a part of? None. She businesses the Ghana Press Association at name. Which is source of funding I could show. Good morning, critic. I like what the expert in journalism say. I do not hope you learn from her and take her advice so you can become better and be professional. Um, it's always, it's very important. That's why I called her. Because of her background and everything else. Freddie called me this morning. Freddie said, you know, Mikhail, I'm, I'm, what a visit, let me know. What effort have they made? I have made financial, physical, spiritual, and everything else. I've dedicated my life to this. I don't do anything else. Well, I now start with construction and some other companies. I come out, address, give my commentary and everything else on issues on a daily basis. Cover stories. Right now, there's an issue with the Guyana police force. And an individual who was charged for the murder of Sir Mars. And the, 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 the Guyana Police Force statement is suggesting that the, the man didn't have any wounds to his body. I was there live and followed a trail of blood. We went there, the police was following a trail of blood. How does a man know who don't know to read and write, sign a statement? Who was there with him? Was the interview in camera? The man family claiming is not he. Now I'm not saying it's not him. But I'm saying there's too much confusion here. Not to have a closer look. The man family is saying the cameras at um, John Fernand's squatting area housing scheme going in the area there. Could show that he went home 9 o'clock the night. He was at home. Let me get the story for you from the night. The story adding up. How do you think that happened? I was live. I showed the blood trail. The police issued a statement to the effect. Was it oil? I spoke about the fact if they took a swab to find out if it was blood. I spoke about that. To decide whose blood, if they took a swab, they would have could have compared it to Sir Mars and know if it was Sir Mars' blood or the suspect's blood. Did they do that? Let me get this for you. Is what? And what I doing, journalism? What does Zimo Ragobi do? Go in the, the press group and asking questions about Sora Mars thing and just asking questions? What she do on this matter? I do. Let she tell me what she do. What makes she more a journalist than me? I been to the ground, upon the ground there. See the blood. The story with the police ain't adding up. There needs to be more clarity. You just send the whole life on the WhatsApp? All right, thank you. Now we cook him with gas. Oh, Jesus Christ. This would be the first one. Why is Kisser repeating and if he could? This would be the first one or? So this is my life. He I... has had his controversies, and in this day and age in this country, who hasn't had their controversies? Um, I too have had mine, but Sir Mars is somebody that has is is loved. Is the road I fall in? Um, I show you blood just spot. Just clarity, make sure everybody understands. Uh, Sir Mars is an openly gay man. 
um, that has nothing to do with the fact that a lot of people love him. Was uh, I just walking is, back or did I miss the trail of blood? Uh, you know, what is... So I was looking for the trail of very, blood. Uh, an individual who's become a very famous um, Guyanese educator um, from time to time. He, have, he has had his controversies and in this day... You know, what's going on here? The guy in Ishkadik is coming to you from on the ground. Um, we're so much, as you see, this is a very desolate and dark area. You only see it as a result of the flat line. So again, blood drops. And it goes all the way in that direction. Um, so just to give you guys... The police, when I went, the police were following a trail of blood. The police said they find two knife. In the police press group, they put a statement that they find two knife. And the suspect might have been injured. The press group statement disappear. Everybody, they don't post it up, by the way. The statement is where a new statement come. The suspect have no injury for anybody. What kind of story is that? With no explanation how you transition from one story to another story? Was the suspect bleeding through his penis? Because you can't see marks of violence for anybody. And I think the 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 the, 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 the you know the police go, where was he bleeding from? Was he bleeding from his penis? This is the only thing I can see bleeding from his penis and 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 the police didn't check there. Cause you know the police are very squirmish. Let me see if I can get. You get the other one for me, boy? I try and forget the spot. There was blood all over the place. Was it Sir Mars's blood? Did Sir Mars die under the vehicle and run up the road at the same time? They break news with the Guyanese critic. I'm coming to you from a uh, back of Providence on the east bank of Demerara, where Sir Mars was just within the last hour killed. And when I say Sir Mars, Sir Mars is known if you um, if you like comedy, if you like local comedy, Sir Mars has been um, a comedian and an educator, um, a teacher. I don't know if educator. Now again, the term, but yes, so. Um, he has been and played. Nazir Maragabir was home sleeping while I covering the news and bringing the news live to you. She knew not work. But she could tell me because she named she business Guyana Press Association. She running things and deciding whether I is a journalist or not. <laughs> That's the reality of the world we're living in. Is the other one? Oh, my mama. I don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. The police guy. Do their thing. So, again. The business name Guyana Press Association is owned by Nazima Ragubir. It's only People associated the PNC could come up with such a convoluted thing. I have brought a court case. You could look at my page. Um, I've brought a court matter against the Guyana Press Association. The business name I brought against, namely Nazima Ragubir. Since it's not a company, it's not an incorporation, it's not an association, it's not a membership, it's not an NGO. It's a $5,000 business 
owned by Nazim or Algabir. I'm asking, who is the people who subscribe to this business? Why election you all going to hold? Who is the, who is the people? Do we know what's going on with the business? What business you upon Nazimo? That's what we want to know. So, y'all yeah, yeah, refer refrain from Sharma, refrain from calling people names and all them things. Um here, I can take me leave. I got a I got things to do. We are court matters to deal with. The dispensation as it relates to who and how people are treated, who treats who how will change as a result of a number of court matters that I would be bringing against a number of issues that I'm seeing in a number of areas. I want to thank you for tuning into the realest thing coming out of Guyana.